one, hopefully you don't like it too wholly because the Swiss stage is halfway done, which means we've got some surprises, some teams that have qualified. And yes, Mad Lions are out. They lost to Vietnam, GAM Esports, major reason losing to minor region. How embarrassing. That has definitely never happened before to the West. Let's totally forget about last year. Tigon alongside Yamato and Dom to break it all down. Welcome, gentlemen. How has the Swiss stage been for you so far here, Dom? I mean, it's been great, bro. I, I love the, the fact that Mad Lions went out. They got <laughs> they got absolutely beat like a pimp that Degon looks like. So, you know, it's been, it was actually just great to see that team just talk all this shit and then just end up getting eliminated as early as possible. You know, everyone was making fun of 100 Thieves from, from North America, but Mad Lions was like, we will try to embarrass as thoroughly as possible. And you also have to consider that Mad Lions got one of the best draws possible. Like the, the fact that they got BLG is unlucky, I would say, but I mean, that's what, that's only, there's only a, um, 33% chance they get a good matchup in the first round because the other two are Hanwha Life and um and Gen G or and BLG rather. So yeah. coming off that, the fact that they rolled PSG is so lucky. Like that's insane to get another play in team. And then after that, they they get GAM, which is obviously easier than getting TL. So they rolled two play in teams and they lost to both. So they are definitively a, a 15th, 16th place team in this Swiss format. Yeah, absolutely. 100 Thieves undefeated in the Swiss stage. Yamato, how's it been for you so far? Well, it's it's been super fun. Like uh, I think in the, in the build up to the World Championship, bro, there's there's so much, so many question marks because I feel like the level of play this year has been so varied uh, from from many teams that have like giga giga stacked rosters. And I feel like there's there's not been a single game or matchup that I found like boring in a way. Maybe it's because I'm starved for like international competition, but. But seeing some of these matchups and seeing how the, how the teams like figure out the meta because it's been kind of open, but at the same time not because there's like clear like outliers in terms of champions, Mad Lions going out the way they did. You know, for me it was very disappointing because like it seems like they changed. It. Like in the interviews, they said that their their whole like approach changed. It's like oh, uh, if we play like this, we can't beat the best. And I was like, bro, so you just you're trying to change your whole approach during the month leading up to Worlds to beat the Asian teams. Bro, if you knew the key to that, if you had the forbidden code, like, why didn't you deploy that shit the entire year, you know? <laughs> like, were you deploy deploying an European-only code or something? Like, I, I wanted them to, you know, I was excited about them going to the World Championship because, in the sense, I thought that they were going to be weird enough, you know? I thought they were going to yeah. be weird. I thought Midwin would play something different. But in reality, now, when I look at how they approach things, in my mind, it's like, at that point, you know, BDS was the team that was trying to play standard and was trying to do that. Uh, I don't like the fact that Mirren was just playing, like, he was just playing Rumble, Nar, and then Kesant for the majority of play-ins. It's like, for, for, for me, that's very, very strange. Uh, so I, I, I don't think that they brought to the table that actually I enjoyed about them. They were just painfully mediocre i feel like i think alvaro had some good games super had some moments earlier too but the solo lanes were uh, a catastrophe like a straight up catastrophe and i think for, for pain gaming that went out i think that's a different story right i think they they should be very proud of what they did i think they 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 made a dent and they made team liquid sweat and i think that in terms of what they bring back to to of course um the region, I think, uh, you know, watching Titan and feeling the energy of the Brazil fans, I think was, was super, super fun, uh, especially like in Champions Queue. Like it was that one day where like Hive was building up super much because they beat like Billy Billy when like at 2 a.m. when they're chilling. Uh, <laughs> that, the, the blind Hive for the moment was was really fun right before the G2 matchup. But uh, I, I think just it's, it's fun to follow all, all the storylines and props to the Brazil fans once again, because like I said, the karaoke is bad. And then after that series against Team Liquid, I had like maybe 100 messages. Sorry, Yamato, you're right. Sorry. Because <laughs> they kind of came after me, you know? So that was kind of based. <laughs> that was kind of yeah. based. I mean, Dom called it out earlier. As long as you spit facts with the Brazilian fans, yes, maybe the immediate reaction will be defend, right? These are our guys. But after the fact, they'll come back to it and shake your hand afterwards. So uh, props to Pain Gaming and all of Brazil for a, at least an exciting showing and being the representative from the minor regions to make it on out. Uh, we'll dive a lot more into the Swiss stage, worlds in general, 
But first, over the last like couple of days, remember, there's a whole world of Western League of Legends happening right now in the business side of things. That's right. We had some free agency movement. Wooloo making sure that all the uh, leaks don't go unnoticed. And so we're going to go through a couple of them now that we've seen uh for lec and then a couple that happened for lcs as well when you take a look at the plethora of moves that came through about like 10 roster leaks that came on out uh which one of them stand out the most to you here dom let's start with the lec you've got wonder being uh bumped out for carlson who was on their uh i guess academy team getting his opportunity yankos out sheo photon out uh, VTO out, Niski out, Adam for irrelevant, and Sheo obviously is making his move. One one three joining over there. Yeah, I mean, I think for me the one that was the most surprising was the one one three move. Um, I just like I I feel like one one three is kind of he's like underrated and overrated at the same time. It's really hard to place him because from the fans they think he's just like the biggest piece of shit of all time like they fucking hate this guy like he's <laughs> he signs that everyone's just like what the fuck this guy is like the most boosted player um but i do remember him having specifically like good moments and i can see i guess how he would work in this roster if there is like stability from the solo lanes like having that guy that creates action on your team could be something really good because irrelevant is very stable sometimes inactive you have uh you know knuck who's the same way ice who could, could potentially be the same way so maybe having 113 in there is a good way to have the team be a little bit more active than they were. Um, but it is kind of a confusing move to me because I was just I was just expecting Skumon to be promoted because BDS has this academy team that like everyone is touting as one of the best academy teams of all time. You know, I mean they won at EU Masters, they won domestically, they were like 17 and 1 in LFL. So people thought that they were gonna just promote the majority of this roster, and it turns out that they are only promoting uh Paris and and uh, Skumon, who's the really hype jungler, he's probably one of the biggest jungle um, pickups of this offseason. Uh, he looks like he's probably going to join K Corp or G2. So I assume that something must have fallen through with Skumon because, I mean, Skumon was literally just better than this guy in LFL, right? So I assume something must have um, fallen through. But that was a surprising one, at least from, from my angle, because I thought that BDS was going to mainly just promote Academy talent um, over, you know, trying to get players from different teams How about for you yamato i i kind of like what um, the direction of, of vitality like for me in terms of uh, just changes that should happen i think that when you reach stagnation at a point that is not satisfactory right like if you're not top, a top three player in your role and you're stagnating in your career i think that um spots in the lec should be considered premium and I think that there are players that are mechanically good enough, but they have like what I like to call like ERL macro. Like I watch a lot of Nak Nako, uh, who is replacing Photon now. Uh, Photon maybe deserves another uh, run at it, but uh, Nak Nako is a player that is mechanically very good, lanes very well, but I can see like he, he doesn't manage sideways well, he doesn't choose his timings well. And usually in the transition to the LEC, that is like the difficult part, but I like when players like this get a chance, you know? Uh, I think that um, looking at, uh, you know, a big talking point for, for what Bipo said was also Vitio. I think that he is also a player that stagnated. He had a, like, MVP, like, uh, what was it, spring split, where he played like a Kali and got a bunch of kills with the Yumi support uh, attaching onto him, and it looked cool and all, but um, uh, this man has not won, like, a single best of five in his career, and it was, he's just fallen flat completely, right? And it's at the point, where you need to ask yourself is the time to like move on and these players need to fight back and then reinvent themselves if they want to compete for an LEC spot. I think they should be like very, very premium. So I think Nak Nako is exciting. I think, uh, you know, the, the, the comeback of Reeker, I think is interesting. Not that I know his level. I think uh, what I've heard is that he's playing well, but the fact that he's replacing Niski after Niski replaced him is, yeah. is, is poetic in a way. And uh, I wonder if, um, you know, we are moving now in the direction where like a player like Yankos has built like such a big stream uh, for himself where he's going to begin to make the choice to to commit to streaming. Same thing for Niski, you know, it's like these, these are guys that work very hard, but also work very hard on building on their own platform. So uh, this might be like a big transition period for the LEC because 
Like we have some names that are hyped, like Vladi and Jackie's had a good first year, and then Kalis is coming in too. And I think that there is, we, we might have players that might qualify into being top three in the position uh, coming in uh, the next year. So I, I'm hopeful uh, for the future of, of, of LAC and some of the players that are coming in. Yeah, that, that to me is what jumps out the most. Uh, Wonder, Yankos, Perks, Niski, all currently unattached with the team. And uh, I don't know, I mean, just from the public eye without any internal information, no leads right now. Obviously, the shuffle is happening and opportunities to continue playing for any of those players will be there. But it might be in a minor region. It might be over in NA. It, it, you know, it just seems like these seats that they've had for such a long time in Europe are no longer given. And it might take a little bit to uh, uh, take some convincing. So uh, very interesting stuff so far from the LEC and uh, what has transpired. Cloud9 making a lot of moves here, Dom, with uh, Fudge being rumored to send on over to Shopify Rebellion. Uh, Zven coming back home to club nine you you know he kind of has that mold and that fit of what they want to do system first over you know great talent and then some leniency he knows ven is a grinder and he puts the games on in a narrow as well uh rumored to be joining cloud nine so just kind of some interesting moves there so far what do you think of that um i mean it's, it's pretty interesting to see the approach that c9 is is doing here where instead of having the the superstars, because I mean, C9 has essentially just been a super team now for years, right? Like they've just been getting the, the best possible player um, at, at every position and it hasn't been working. So kind of going back to the stability of Sven, who's still a, a good player, but you know, like the, the trade-off here would be, oh, do we get some really, you know, hyped up import? Because we do have, uh, I mean, we do have a, a Blabber still on the team and we still have Vulcan on the team, right? So they have the ability to like choose if they're going um, AD carry uh, import or mid lane import. Seems like they decide on bringing in some type of uh, mid lane import or at least having the spot open for, you know, maybe like a LCK CL player seeing some success with those or maybe some type of um, like hyped up, like, I don't know, like a European player or something like this. Maybe they get video and just completely run down their roster. Who knows? Opening the spot for a player like this uh, is, is pretty interesting. So it's pretty obvious that C9 is going the route of import solo lanes, like back with uh, back to, you know, what they did originally and, and see how that goes from there. Yeah. Um, I just, I just wonder if it's like, okay, now we're going back to the team synergy. Cause is the firepower, the same from Zven to Berserker, like with for most of Berserker's career in Cloud9, no, maybe last year or last split. Actually, no, all of last year, maybe, because he didn't seem the same going into the 2024 season. Uh, Yamato, what do you make of some of these changes that Cloud9 has decided on? I, I, I like Zven a lot. Uh, I think that this is, I, I like, I think he was the best part of, of, of Dignitas. I, I, I think that, um, like, in terms of, I like guess it's, it's, it's such a rare scenario of C9 knowing exactly like his, 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 his character. I imagine that they are going to continue with Blabber, right? So it might have been something like the last time we had him on the Sackdown, he said that he has a lot of input on 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 what, um, of course, um, uh, you know, the decisions that are happening in terms of the team. So it could be one of those things where Blabber uh, really misses, you know, a strong voice in the team that is pushing people forward because from speaking to Blabber, it seemed like this is something that they were just uh, uh, clearly missing. They were lacking that confrontation and that push to, to move in the right direction. And I think that uh, Sven is a player that can definitely, you know, find form again. Is he going to be like, you know, as good as uh, like the Eon and Masu, the, the young guns, you know, that is a question uh, that uh, needs to be answered still. But um, I, I think you know, it's it's so difficult to replace Berserker and George Pune. <laughs> like, that is that is insanely difficult. Like you did the Gambit of the Year, and then George Pune uh, is supposed to be you know the main guy, DNA talent that uh, is supposed to you know uh, you know um, like I wouldn't be surprised if next year George Pune goes to the team, and then all of a sudden he's he's good again because he's gotten like the wake up call that is is necessary for him. But I don't know who they're going to place in the middle lane. I imagine with 
the introduction of Sven in, into Botlane, that the idea is that they're going to import, and I don't know how extravagant they want to get here. Like, are we going to have like randomly like C9 BDD or like C9 Doinbees back or something crazy like this? Like, I don't know how far I'm supposed to imagine it, or are we going to go with a route where maybe they get someone like, let's say, Fate or like someone that is, uh, you know, less of a known name in Korea that could, uh, you know, uh, do well for himself, like, for example, uh, Quarters done in, in FlyQuest. Uh, the signing of Inero, I don't know, this guy has touch of death, man. Like, every org he joins just <laughs> disbands <laughs> and then dies. Uh, no, I didn't even think of that. <laughs> uh, so I don't know. I don't know if he's, like, the, 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 like the unlucky one that is just ruining the orgs. Uh, I guess I guess after after two years, uh, we, we will find out, like, in Inero's track record, I... I I, 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 I guess he, like an Echo Fox, it was a long time ago, 2018, where I believe they got second place. I say believe, I, I looked it up while, while Dom was talking. I don't know why I said believe, as if I have some, you know, intricate knowledge. I, I, I don't think it ever has like that crazy of a track record. Uh, so I wonder uh, what the angle is there. Like, I'm, I'm really curious what, what, what Jack is, is, is seeing there in terms of... Inero being uh, the main guy at the helm, but uh, I know that Jack is someone that keeps the ear close to the ground. I've had many conversations with him in the past, and he, he keeps up with everything, so he knows all the moving pieces. Yeah, I think the Golden Guardian's ear definitely was a part of it as well, right? Creating the infrastructure that was there. That was a very, that too was a very structured team. They were a little bit more expensive with, in terms of coaching, like maybe not expensive, but they had a, lo a larger coaching staff around it. And that's been one of the big criticisms that we've had uh, of Cloud9, Monty specifically, just saying, hey, look, who who is the tangible staff that can whip them into shape? You know, we know that Vagar is on the roster over there, but before it was just like a one-man band there with... Uh, with um, oh, why... Mithy, thank you. I kept thinking N first. I was like, not Nisky, Mithy. Uh, and then Reaper, who's very much another one-man band kind of guy. And so uh, now Nero looking to take the helm there. And yeah, you touched on it. Echo Fox, no longer here. Before that, the old Tainted Minds. Was it Tainted Minds? Back. Tainted Minds, yeah. Uh, and the Osh, Golden Guardians, gone. Immortals, CLG. gone. Uh, actually, you didn't do CLG, right? Oh, didn't do CLG. You didn't do CLG. Didn't do but CLG. That's, <laughs> that's a lot of different organizations that he's been a part of. Be careful, Cloud9 fans. Be careful. I'm, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we'll, we'll see what else unfolds. I think the last interesting part about it is, you know, you, you have the LATAM, the Brazilian organizations coming on in. Are, are we going to find homes for some of these North American players or will it, will it be like, Hey, LATAM, these are LATAM teams. We're going to hire and bring in the best LATAM players combinations that we can possible, or will there be an amalgamation of, of America's players or, and any other imports, European imports or uh, Asian imports. So I, I think this new kind of format has led to some interesting wrinkles because i think over in vct americas at first it started with latam teams had mostly latam rosters except um uh, sentinels they took on two of the players from loud from brazil squad but then the next year the rosters become pretty interlinked and you know latin latin organizations still had uh american players american player uh, uh latin players were in american organizations it, it became really interesting so i think the first year it might stay locked but the second year all of a sudden it starts rotating on about have you heard anything about this dom or have thoughts on that um no i mean like right now there so what happened with like the the rules are there import rules in in valorant is it like because i think right now you can only have one america's player like from the the other americas is that was that the same in valorant or no i'm not sure i can look that up right now okay because i think that that's like the thing that would obviously prevent it in and i i mean i also you know, brazilian and american players are way more competitive in valorant compared to like koreans and chinese uh players obviously china and korea are still winning i think china didn't china win the last um champions and then before that korea won like the masters so I feel like it's it's been relatively like like the Asian teams are good, but definitely NA teams are better um, and Brazilian teams are better compared to how it is in league. So I could definitely see a world where um, where it's still just like one player maybe going over it. Like maybe some of the worst NA players will get into a Brazilian team that's going for like a super team type of route. But I don't think that there'll be like that much mixing with the rule 
also with the level. Yeah, yeah. I'm doing a quick look. It looks like the the biggest question for Valorant players were like, "Hey, what region are they considered a part of?" Because remember, at the time when franchising came on in, T1 had a com like a full Asian roster or a full American roster. Was it? I think they had a full American roster, but then they got partnered with APAC. So it was like, okay, what happens? Uh, but I, it seems like the import rule was as long as they are from the same region, you can stay in the same region. That that's what mattered. So uh, yeah. I'm looking, yeah. So it might be the same thing uh, within uh, the way that we said it. Maybe like these franchises from LATAM all of a sudden just become America's franchises and NA players are NA players. And so we'll see a nice little mixture of it uh, there moving forward. And uh, again, big shout outs to uh, Sheep. This is their... A sheep and sheep esports this is their time you know they're, they're, they're christmas of the year and they do their best work so uh best of luck to them and thanks for leading the way and being uh, the source for us so far in this episode and i'm sure we'll have a lot more releases coming out in just a little bit all right so that was a little bit about the news outside of worlds and swiss stage we've got more uh, Swiss stage action and drama coming to you in just a little bit. But before we do, I got to remind you about one of our partners that power us here at Power Spike, and it's our friends over at uh, Express VPN. Have you ever browsed in incognito mode? Well, it's probably not as incognito as you think because Google just recently settled a $5 billion lawsuit after being accused of secretly tracking users in incognito mode. And what was Google's defense? incognito does not mean invisible in fact all of your online activity is still a hundred percent visible to a ton of third parties unless you use express vpn with ex without express vpn these third parties can still see every website you visit even in incognito mode which includes your isp your mobile network provider and as well as the admins of your wi-fi network including your school if you're still over at school if you're browsing things definitely a little weird or trying to log into some of your favorite streaming services over at work your boss can see that and of course your parents if you still live at home and they're tech savvy enough express vpn reroutes 100 percent of your traffic through secure encrypted servers so third parties can't see your browsing history but that's not the only use for it. There are multiple uses. Again, if you have multiple different shows that are region locked, Dom, you're able to use ExpressVPN and watch any version of your favorite streaming service, right? Yep, absolutely. I, it was really useful uh, for me to use ExpressVPN when I was in uh, Australia because their Netflix and everything was way different over there. Like the amount of shows you get is nothing compared to American Netflix. We're actually blessed over here because I know Yamato have said similar things about different apps and being able to like whatever streaming services uh he uses they're just way different um in germany the german laws are hard to get around as well i think watching shows is just like the the number one thing when it comes to using a, a, a vpn like express vpn because it's just nice to have the ability to watch what you want you know what day and age is this where you don't get to watch like the shows you want like i i don't know it feels weird so uh, i really like that that ExpressVPN gives you the ability to do that and do it without having insane amounts of lag as well. I think that's the other thing is sometimes when you use a VPN, it feels like shady, things take longer to load, it drops constantly. Like this is a solid VPN that you can use consistently and it will end up, you know, pushing through and it will feel like you're not using a VPN at all. Yep. It's the one that I use on my phone as well here in Korea. So that, that app was really easy to set up. Uh, thanks to our friends over at ExpressVPN. So set up your online privacy today by visiting expressvpn.com slash powerspike. That's expressvpn.com slash powerspike. And you can get an extra three months free. One more time. That's expressvpn.com slash powerspike. Then to our friends over at ExpressVPN for making it happen here on Power Spike. And again, giving you a product that we use ourselves that better our daily lives. All right. With that, let's move on to our next topic. We've got ourselves a little keeper kick, and this one reeks of Monty. <laughs> <laughs> reeks of Monty. It's a keeper kick. Are we keeping or kicking D plus or Fnatic? So this is a little interesting one here. D plus hitting a two and one fanatic at one and two, and they've got a tough, tough draw coming up. But who we keeping, who we kick in between it, these two? Let's get into it. This week's keeper kick. 
All right. So D plus has surprised some, I think, given uh, their pre-tournament expectations, whereas Fnatic, Maybe they too have surprised given their pre-tournament expectations. Let's start with that. How have they done compared to what you expected? And uh, it, who who would you keep or kick based off of their current performances? Oh, uh, straight up, we are kicking Fnatic no matter what. I, they <laughs> they lost to the other team, dumb one. <laughs> like Fnatic have been, I don't know, like it's, it's, it's crazy when you have so low expectations of a team and still find yourself so disappointed. You know, the, 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 the whole issue of this roster for the longest time has been that they have never been able to be five players that are playing well at the same time. There's always someone or a two or sometimes even three players that just do something so goofy that makes you question the whole thing because they are individually able. And this, this thing has been plaguing this team for so long in terms of how they choose their fights and how they carry momentum in the game. Like there are like glimpses of, of things that are good, like that game five that they won against G2 with that Renekton Nidalee, but that was so circumstantial because it was like a dive that went wrong and G2 had a bad draft that it kind of just fell in their lap. You know, and at the same yeah. time, it was a moment where they just carried zero pressure. And now we're here at the World Championship again. You know, Fnatic fans, Fnatic faithful, they think maybe, maybe, maybe it's going to be different, but it just isn't, right? It's just a memory of what we saw at MSI. It's like Fnatic's matchup up against Damwon was extremely disappointing because there were, all, there were opportunities to win. It's like if you're going to win a match and you in the first round draw down one when the chances of drawing something worse is clearly there, I think that you should be able to run away with it. But it's once again the story of Fnatic having an opportunity to do something and they just can't take it. I think that Noah and June have been performing decently. I think that uh, Humanoid and Razork, in terms of where their standing is in this team, need to be able to do a lot more because these are supposed to be the two players that are like, you know, that have the capacity to do so. But when, we, when I see Humanoid on Yon, he's doing like, not even banana combos. We need new fruit to call the combos that he's doing because <laughs> like, his team has three Nash to take. Star and he's, fruit just, combos like, he's, just, he's just making complications when they're not necessary. And then the final nail in the coffin that just, just all oxygen came out of the lungs of every Fnatic fan is they are playing against top esports. We hear the story about June and how they planned the whole night to ban Yon, and then he apologized. Okay, we get it. You you said something about your team publicly. Whatever, I don't give a fuck about that part. Just that you're giving Yon to Cream, and your plan is to play a patient draft that requires 24 minutes of stability. And I'm sitting there with a stopwatch. I'm like, damn, the five minutes of stability, they got a good lane swap. This is a new record for this fanatic. Eight minutes, damn, oh, never mind. Now everything is starting to go to shit. Let's TP there, let's TP there. We are diving with small discarder, why? And then the game is just over. With TP <laughs> flanker with 150 stacks of smolder, I was going insane watching this. And at this point, you know, I think all hope is gone, you know, it's like, it needs to be some, so this is a doctor strange type shit, you know, one in 50 billion that they somehow figured it out and uh, make it through because I think Weibo is just going to walk over them. So for me, kick them. I'm done with them. Do something I about this fanatic, team. bro. I hate that team. Like, that team just triggers me. Like, they are the most triggering team to watch. I, I would say that out of everything that I, like, hate in League of Legends, like, just dumb plays for no reason. When you watch a lot of League when you're a co-streamer, things you start hating are like dumb plays for no reason like you, you view things more from the lens of like what is this comp trying to do what is the other comp trying to do who is playing better towards what the identity of their comp is like the clutch factor like all the throwing versus g2 that just pissed me off like this team just bothers me i don't know just watching them it just makes me upset i and i i can't control it i feel like it's their fault like why do they do this to me every single time? Like they draft in a way that, I mean, I've, I've said it on multiple shows. I, I went on rants, like they're just not the team to be drafting Smolder. They, they, they think they're fucking Gen G. They have identity crisis or some bullshit. I don't know what's wrong with them. Um, but even like the Gam game, it's like, okay, like, like show me something versus Gam. And that was a tragic Gam game. Like I, I will say that Fnatic has gotten better at throwing in the mid game because now they just never get an early game lead anymore. So they can't even throw in the mid game. They just play a shit mid game and just lose the game in 20 minutes now. So 
I, I will say they've shored up the weakness of of uh, throwing in the mid game. That hasn't happened yet, but like the game versus Dom one. Can you get an easier fucking game than that? Like, can you really get an easier fucking game? Dom one through the whole game gave you free fucking Nash and then Humanoid just w tries for a 1v2 that's completely pointless. It's not like he's, you know, any Yone, if you watch enough of this game, you don't need to play Yone to know what a Yone player is going to do. A good Yone player is like stacking two Qs off the Baron. Like he's turning with his E. He'll like jump out with his E, like chunk somebody real quick, go back leverage the fact that he has something to stack off, but instead he just takes like a 1v2. It's his complete ego. There's nothing else to say about that. There's no thought behind that. There's no reason why that would be good. It's not good for the team. It's just like he's trying to make a montage play. You're doing that in a fucking like world Swiss round one. Like you're not just gonna, gonna play the situ out, situation out normally. You're going to go for like a montage play. It's like, dude, I don't, I guess, yeah. I mean, I guess that's why Humanoid is so clutch internationally is because he goes for plays like that, so. Well played to him, man. He he really botched that one. He just bottled it by himself, pretty much. Uh, second game versus Gam. Oscar had a fucking complete stinker. Somehow they still don't know how to, like, lane swap. I mean, the Gnar was insanely far behind. Like, he was so far behind. It was really sad that they weren't able to win that game. Um, that Gam wasn't able to win that game because I thought Gam actually had it. And I wanted to see Fnatic get punished for that bullshit. Like, that was a, a really disgusting way to end up one and one. Uh, and, um... Yeah, the, the final match they played first top esports. It was just an FF, wasn't it? Like they just forfeit in draft. That's what I assumed. Like they didn't even want they didn't even want to play the game. Just give him fucking Yone. Just give Cream Yone. Like giving Cream Yone is just it just it perturbs me. Why? Woo. Why would you ever give Cream Yone out of all the champions in the meta right now? Like you're giving Cream Oh, that's like let's let's play against Zika and give Zika Yone. But we don't have Chovy on our team. We don't have Chovy on our team to pick Smolder or something. Let's just give Zika fucking Yone if we're Fnatic. I'm sure we can we can win. You didn't even give themselves a chance. Like you're not gonna even give yourself a chance. Why even fucking play? Like I hope FlyQuest doesn't have that same fucking approach where they play Han with life. I hope they at least try something. And you know, like even if FlyQuest did give the Yone, I could I could kind of understand it in the context of FlyQuest because they do have somebody that plays Smolder and they can be a patient team and they could play like a semi-stable game. But it's like, there's nothing more opposite to what Fnatic is than their draft and what they think they are. And it makes me just think, what the fuck are they doing over there? Like, what are they doing in, in this in this roster? You know, it would be better if they had less talent. If they had less talent, <laughs> maybe I wouldn't feel as disgusted every single time I watch them. But because they have, like, players that I don't, I don't even think any of their players are bad. Like, I don't think they're really bad players. I think they're flawed, but they're not dog shit players. And the fact that they end up with th these results consistently and these mistakes, it's like, what the fuck is going on? It just, it feels dysfunctional from the outside. It, it, you have this just weird feeling when you watch them where it's like, it's like, do they even like each other? Do they even want each other to, su to succeed? Is this does this roster have any chance? Does this roster coaching staff have any chance of staying together next year? Because it just feels like they, they feel like one of those teams that just doesn't like each other. They, they have that vibe. Like when you look at G2, when you look at TL, even when you look at FlyQuest, it feels like those teams have stuck together. Even the way Mad Lions lost, like sure, it was pathetic. Sure, it was embarrassing. Sure, they played some of the worst League of Legends I've seen. Sure, for Skawi was the worst Yone that has probably ever graced this earth. Um, you know, sure, Merwin was terrible in that series. Sure, the fans were delusional. Sure, Ebai was just being delusional on his coaster. Sure, all that stuff happened, but at least they, they won and lost as a team. You know, at least they won and lost as a team. Where Fnatic, I don't know, like they, they don't feel like they're winning and losing as a team. Like they feel like they are completely disjointed. They are completely separated. It just feels like they should just lose quietly to Weibo and just get out of the world championship so you can make your decision uh, with what you're doing for your your next group of people that will attack this next year. Because coaching staff players, I mean, something's going next year. There's no way they're keeping this. Yeah, I mean, how long have they had this Razark Humanoid duo this core right it was hilly along with them for a little while but uh, you know they tried reckless they tried trimby then you know they swapped down on the bottom side of the map and now that you think they have some stability down there oscar Rinden comes on in and it just feels like it's these two it's these two guys and they live and die by them and this is as good as this team's going to get especially if the strategy behind it is hey let's play patient that's just not what they do that's just not what they do uh, so Fnatic having a tough go of it. On the opposite side, D Plus is on a pretty pretty easy path. I mean, they had Fnatic, then they had FlyQuest. Again, uh, FlyQuest uh, had an opportunity to win in that one. And then the LNG game, it just felt like they lost game number one, and then 
they threw a lead and hung around for a little while and had control of the game until an elder flip and they lose the elder flip and that's D plus out 002 with the opportunity to qualify on in. They'll have another one here against top esports. How has their performance been so far compared to what you expect out of them, Showmaker and the boys? Dom. I, I think that this team is exactly what you'd expect. Like they, like they have literally <laughs> shown there's some teams that have shown they haven't shown who they really are yet. You know, like for example, like Team Liquid, I think is underperformed. I don't feel like they haven't shown who they are yet. Like sure. People will be like, oh, yeah, like NA's dog shit, whatever. I, I think if you've actually watched them and you're being honest all year, they have they have looked weird. BLG hasn't really shown who they are yet. They haven't shown why they're like one of the, the favorites to, to win. I feel like Dom One has just showed you exactly who they are. Good mechanics, good early game, some just fucking abysmal mid-game decisions, like disgusting mid-game decisions. And then they just end up, you know, winning anyway because they're playing versus an NA or EU team. But you can literally look at these games, right? You can look at the Fnatic game. You could look at the FlyQuest game. And you're like, what other Asian team at this event is letting them win that game? I literally think no one's letting them win that game. Like, people flame Weibo all the time. I don't think Weibo's letting them win that shit either. I just feel like they are just not winning that game versus, you know, even G2. I think G2 would would clean them up in that type of game. Um, and it's just tough. It's tough to see these types of uh, games be won by them because I feel like... Like Dalmon's a frustrating team to watch because they, you feel like they could be so good if they just didn't do that, you know. But it sounds like, like the it. winning the winning version of Fnatic rather than the losing version of Fnatic. Yeah, I mean they they have been just Fnatic the whole time. They're just Korean Fnatic, but they're just Korean, so they're better. Right? That's it. That's who they are. So I, I they're they're like a fun team to watch. I like that team for some like for, the difference is when I watch Dalmon, I like like the players. Like when they end, I'm like, come on, guys! Like what the fuck are you doing? When Fnatic in, I'm like, fuck you guys. Look at what you did to me. Like, you know, why did you make me even believe in you for a second? So like, I have a different emotional reaction to the teams. There's something that's just likable about Dom1. It's something that's really unlikable about Fnatic to me. But um, yeah, I mean, Dom1 have, have shown who they are. And it's very hard for them to beat the like better Asian teams if they show up like this. Because I mean, uh, coming into this, I think Weibo's uh, underperformed my expectations a little. I would say that... Um, that LNG is the team I thought would be the weakest from China. I mean, when they when LNG played Weibo in playoffs, you know, Weibo did end up beating them 3-2. They played in regional gauntlet. It was the day after finals. I don't really consider it as as like anything to really judge uh, Weibo off of. So I thought LNG would be weak coming into this because of the fact that they also, like, I didn't know what was going up with the scout situation, had they been scrimming right. with Yagao. Right. Like, it just seemed like they were the team that was the most prone to collapse. So seeing them go out like 4-0 is really, really surprising to me. It uh, might be one of those things where, you know, like, because you're you're not, because you don't have the full boot camp and everything, yeah. you end up playing your best. You know, like, there's like kind of like a honeymoon phase you get in when you're, when it's like, ah, oh, well, you know, this cards, the, the, the deck was stacked against us. Like, let's just get out there and just show what we're made of. And they're just playing, you know, how they are. So I don't, th I, I thought that these would be the weakest two teams from uh, Korea and, and China respectively. So I was surprised to see that LNG is out. But yeah, I think Dalmo just showed who they who they are. Like this is just how they play, and this is the reason why people don't believe they can beat the higher higher up teams. Yeah, thoughts here, Yamato on D plus before we move on. I think D plus. Uh, the, the main thing that is standing out to me that is uh, surprising is that I honestly think aiming is having quite of a like just a bad tournament by the standard he set for himself like in terms of how they qualified in terms of how they played the summer split I think he had like a like a solid six game there against LNG but like for example the Ezreal game it's like when I see aiming 3-0 Ezreal he's like three core ahead of two core I'm expecting him to drag that game and be like a menace you know because that's like his thing like Ezreal and uh, it just wasn't the case like he was one of the easier Ezreals to kills Kill, and I think that he was a little bit of a non-factor almost in terms of how the games have played out. I think the Dam one, like it's funny because the way they lost against LNG is very similar, not as extreme as what Fnatic did against Top Esports, but also in a similar regard because the the analysis, like everyone's view of Dam one, should be like you want to set up cases for when for Showmaker to actually be able to pick. Uh, some of these champions that he excels on in terms of finding Silas angles, Syndra angles, Leblanc angles, uh, but they committed to the Ziggs identity in that series against LNG, which limited super much what, of course, um, Showmaker could pick. He was not good during the ADKR meta. He tried to play the Smolder and he tried to be a team that they are not. 
and uh, eventually like that second game was very obvious that LNG just completely figured them out because the bands were like Jack Snar and me responded like had the Renek done after the game one and the rumble because Kingen doesn't play Renek and then they just blind pick Camille and that was such an insane lock-in because in the end King and just slammed Kesante and they had this draft where they had Kesante, Ziggs, Aries, like who the hell is killing yeah. anything here? So yeah. Daman definitely they wrestle with this uh, like where their identity should be. I think that's a big issue for them too. I think you you want to create circumstances where Showmaker can be the X Factor, especially with some of the champions that are stronger here. And uh, to add on the LNG point. Like I think, I think it's very, very evident which teams have figured out the meta better, because Billy Billy as a team, like they gave up Yon after losing to Scouts Yon in the regular split. Like they just gave up Yon. They first picked, um, uh, I believe, uh, what was it? The Oriana, right? The first pick Oriana, which was very strange. Now we see everything about the Yon. They lose against LNG. There was the whole Nocturne Rumble Yon, which turns out, you know, everyone thinks is really fucking strong. It's performing super, super well on the patch. So LNG, I feel like they had a really, really good grasp on what to play. Uh, Weibo Gaming, I think that they are playing super good. Even the game against G2, their draft is so trash, but they have such a good awareness of what G2 wants to accomplish because they made it difficult for them to actually progress. So I see signs of like good gameplay from Weibo and I think Billy Billy and Weibo they suffer from the same issue is that they just haven't figured out what their priority structure should be because uh, I, I, and I think that usually when when things come down to that after be ones and then you have a little bit of time to restructure this is usually where we see resurgences of, of teams. I want to bring everyone back to last year, like T1, for example, they almost lost to Team Liquid in that best of one. Piyoshi was like kicking everybody in the head. And yeah. then like, they, they lost to Genji in like a very, very one-sided fashion playing melee versus melee. And then they got some time and then all of a sudden they came back and all of a sudden they're playing the Senna, they're playing the Jinx Tom. And all of a sudden they look very, very different. And I think that it's important to not underestimate how small things can make such a big difference. But when it comes to Damwon and Fnatic, <laughs> The, a large thing would even it wouldn't even make a difference because these teams are just so set in their ways. <laughs> yeah. I like that. I like that a lot. I think um when it comes to the pick bands, right? Obviously a lot of focus has been on Yone uh getting on through. It has been played fifteen times. He's twelve and three. That is not the highest win rate champion with at least five games. Who is the highest win rate champion with at least five games? Here at Worlds, main event, just the main event. Are we guessing, or is this yes. all the YouTube? It's, it has to be Kalista, guessing. right? Is That's it Kalista? right. Yeah. It's Kalista, <laughs> seven and one with Kalista. But the the Yone the Yone part many, is interesting to me. Oh, how many ahead. Silas? How many Silas games have have we had? Because I feel Silas. like I haven't. I feel like I haven't seen that champion lose yet. Silas. Oh, Silas. Let's see where. Silas, there's only been three. You're right. He's three and oh, but there's only been three. And oh, no. there's been zero bans of Silas because it feels like teams are opting into banning Ziggs and playing against Yone rather than, I guess, banning Yone and playing against Ziggs. Aurora also has been the most banned champ because Aurora, Ziggs, Ash, Skarner, Jax, the most bans. And then Yone, even though it feels like we've seen so much of him been played 15 games it is by far the most played champ in the most banned section so if it's not banned it's picked no matter what and yeah. it's doing just a crazy crazy win rate right now at at 80 percent in the mid lane and it skews everything so yeah i think we should leave it up for a scream that makes sense <laughs> and also to add guys it's like humanoid was one of those losses against that one in the way that he yeah. lost that game was That's one. That was that horrible. Game. Frescawi was drifting on the map. <laughs> Fresco. <laughs> and, 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 look, I don't. I, I think we finally, might have to... like caps lost against How Life, right? And that yeah. game, he almost dragged, right? It was so close to turn into win because of how fucked up this champion is and that's you know, my most banned on pick him like i'm getting screwed over here i think that as most banned like please ban it <laughs> yeah i think the interesting thing is like you know for a while we've had the memes about renekton and graves where they scale with the amount of like english that you don't speak so like if you don't speak english it's very good for those champions i'm starting to think that yone is also there like it seems like there's something wrong with when you speak too much english and you play this champion this might be like a mandarin hangul type um hangul type 
type champion where it's like you need to have those languages come in in order to to play. I mean, honestly, to be honest, Vietnamese was looking pretty decent on it as well. So like, <laughs> like outside of that 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 game we played recently, when I think about play-ins, like I think if you just speak any Asian language, you're probably fine on the Yone pick. Maple was 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 speaking a bit um, of, of Mandarin on the Yone, so I think that might be my new thing is that like if you speak English, just don't pick Yone, bro. I don't know. Is what ABA it is. knows he bans with both sides. Very yeah. smart. <laughs> I mean, he's. I mean, he's. He speaks the most English, bro. That guy's name is Ian. He's from Ohio. Like it is just. <laughs> it is fucking cursed. Like we can't have Ian from Ohio. That's right. A lot of there. a lot of pro players. Uh, like traditional sports competitiveness comes from football. Ian was wrestling. That's that's pretty American. So uh, yeah, that that is what he did. Uh, yep. All right. Well, with that, let us know who you keep in or kick in D plus or Fnatic here in our keep or kick. As uh, again, Fnatic have the tough draw. They are up against it was a Weibo, and that's going to be just a huge, huge task for them for their tournament lives. On the opposite side, D plus are one of the three LCK squads that can qualify to the next stage, all in round number four at two and one with their match against top esports, Hanwha Life against FlyQuest, and G2 against or T1 against G2. Uh, and we'll see how all those matches go down later on. I think about that draw. That's very lucky for all the LCK uh, matches. And also just pretty good for the, I think, uh, the uh, for TL, for NA fans. Like, I think that, what, yesterday or two days ago, that last day of matches, that was pretty fun. Fun if you're a Western fan, T1 won. You know, a lot of fans in the West like T1. And then TL uh, took care of business. Yep. And then Gam knocked out. Mad uh, Mad Lions Koi, so it was just it was a good West, uh, I guess NA day, maybe not Western day, but NA day for uh, a lot of those teams. Okay, so next on up before we move on to our fraud alert with some of our underperformers, we got to remind you about our friends over at AG One. You've heard us talk about AG One so much because it's been such a huge additive to our lives as a daily health drink packed with nutrients to help alleviate bloating, support sustained energy, and whole body health. It has helped me and supported my immune system, and I've talked about it multiple times. It helps me go. Like, I've felt a difference in my stool when uh, I've got to go. It just makes it a lot smoother, a lot cleaner. Uh, again, also a lot of people. Yep, I like to let everyone, because that, that that's just important. We're get, we're getting up there in age, Dom, where we got to start getting checked, you know, for those what do you things. Mean we? So making sure you, we, what do you mean? <laughs> what we, do you mean? We, we got to get we, we got to get checked. You know what I mean? You, you got to get checked. So making sure that we've got nice, easy stools, very important for our internal health. Again, AG1 contains probiotics, prebiotics, and gut supporting ingredients to support your digestion, reduce bloating, and keep you regular. That is. That is what it says right there. Regular right there. Also, AG1 is made of bioavailable ingredients that actually work with your body. And many of the world's top performers drink AG1. Dr. Andrew Huberman, uh, F1 driver Sir Lewis Hamilton, Olympic gold medalist Allison Felix, and so many others drink AG1 every day and trust it to support their whole body health. And Dom has stated before, the taste when it comes to green drinks, AG1 is up there as one of the best. Uh, best tasting green drinks that you've had here Dom. yeah definitely and i've i've upped my my ag1 game recently because for for the longest time i'd kind of just been stirring it with like i have like you know like metal chopsticks so i was just using a chopstick to stir it but i got one of those those blenders you know the ones that one yeah that changes the game like that makes it like even way better so if you're getting ag1 get yourself one of those it makes it like super enjoyable um I mean, uh, you know, Degon and Monty have always talked about putting creatine in it, in it, but it's been super easy. It's also like pretty refreshing, I would say. Um, I put it in just cold water and some some AG one. I got the little stir now. I've, I've been uh, I've been on on game with it, and and we got Rachel now joining AG one as well. So she's been um, she's been taking it with me. We've been doing it every single morning because um, we have a lot of it, man. We got a lot of AG one every time we get one of these sponsorships. Like I think we've we've been with them for almost a year now. And every yep. quarter we get these huge kits. Like we get yep. these AG1 huge kits. And it's like we get not only like a full, like every day, like a full canister where it, they have like the AG1 in a bag that you pour it in and you refrigerate it because it has a uh, you know probiotics and stuff like that. But we also have the packets as well. 
So like I have, uh, we essentially get double what you need every single day for like a long periods of time. So we were just like, hey, Rachel, you need to start getting on the AG1. So we've been on the AG1. We got the stir now. It's been good. So I, I definitely appreciate them for, um, for hooking us up. And I have noticed like I feel better throughout the day. It feels good to take. You know, it's one of those things where you, you take it and you're like, this is good for my body. Like my, my body feels better as a result. It makes you feel like like cleaner or something. Um, so I really enjoy that feeling. And I'm, I'm happy that we have AG1 supporting us once again. And again, coffee is huge here in Korea. It's helped me cut down on my coffee intake as I have it in the morning and keeps me full and ready to go. So if you want to notice the difference in your body with the AG1, it's time for you to invest into it. Try AG1 and get a free bottle of vitamin D3, K2, and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase at drinkag1.com slash Legends. That's a $48 value for free if you go to drinkag1.com slash Legends. Check it on out, and thanks to our friends over at AG1 for re-upping. That's right. They went out of their way to re-up us here at Power Spike for Worlds. Thanks to all of you at home as well. So if you guys have had it, thank you so much for supporting the show and having AG1. Let us know in the comments how that has helped you out uh, with your life. Thank you to our friends over at AG1. All right. Well, AG1 is a true blue, better uh, portion of our life, and they, they stick to it. They're not fraudulent at all which leads us to our next segment. It's time for Fraud Alert. A couple of underachievers, one of them from NA that, you know, like that shit was always going to happen. It was always going to be some team from NA that was going to let the fans down. But a huge surprise. It's let down maybe Dom. It's definitely let down me because I think that was my that was my pick to win it all. BLG and Team Liquid. Fraud Alert. Let's see. who Who is the more fraudulent one? Let's get to it. All right, Yamato, you've gotten to watch both these squads, and they've had high hopes for their regions. Like, not even just, like, for the fans of their regions, but fans of other regions that were expecting them to do well as well. BLG has been one of the best teams in the world for the last almost two years, and they've reloaded their roster. They've changed it around. They've gone to international events. They've succeeded, but not quite at the highest level. And now it's time to show up at Worlds as they're about to peak, and they are now not doing as well as we thought you know an interview came out that maybe they were behind the meta read what have you made of this blg squad here yamato well i'm happy this segment is called fraud alert and not just fraud right away you know stamp them because and there's definitely an alert there's definitely an alert for billy billy i i, I think that uh in, in regards to to where i've placed some of the players like i i believed uh, been and on to be the best player in their positions uh, coming into the tournament. So the, the, the standard is is very, very high for me in terms of how I evaluate uh, their individual play. I, I do agree with the notion that I think their read on the meta has been very, very bad. And it's felt almost as like at, at, in the beginning, like they, they played against Mad Lions. They dropped like the Ari Vi combo. I was like, OK, this is just this is just they're just picking up free winners. No problem. Cool. A little now, like we, we know these champions, they know how to play these champions. But in that game, what is so funny is that Yon was open. And Billy Billy have a bad med, a draft read, but it just happened in that moment that Mad Lions had an even worse one because they followed that up with like <laughs> Syndra, uh, whatever, you know? <laughs> uh, but uh, Billy Billy I mean, continue. if you're for a Scowie on your team, you might as well go Syndra over Yone. That's maybe, all I'll yeah. say. <laughs> so maybe, maybe they just knew themselves and they just were driving to off the cliff and they just pressed the gas, you know? It is what it is. Uh, <laughs> And then the game against LNG, right? Like, that was the biggest disappointment. It's like they banned Kindred on three. It's like the way I explained to my to my viewers, like, what if what if Shun just stepped in the room? It's like, guys, can I play a game here to to just get my world skin? Can I play a game of Kindred? And Big Boy was like, what the fuck did you just say? And then he walked on stage and he just banned Kindred to send him a message. He's like, this motherfucker. Like, I don't know what happened with the Kindred ban because the Kindred ban, like, Kindred is not played. Wei Wei is not a big Kindred guy. Like, I don't know where the Kindred ban came from. Four or five, they banned. And nothing like it was i don't know they 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 had such a weird and terrible read of lng that it was it was crossing beyond disrespect where they're letting them play the young which is something that scout basically when they did the run-up of taking first place in the regular split in, in the heaven group a young was a very very big part of that in terms of lng's resurgence 
Rumble was always perma band, and LNG in that moment found a composition that worked super, super well. But I mentioned Bin and On, and I think, you know, something that I didn't notice is like Dom had to point this out to me is that Bin just like flipped uh, the poppy into, into Oriana and he just got tackled into the wall and the game was over. It's like Billy Billy was very close to winning a game that was, was bad for them. And I think the same thing against uh, T1. It's like once again, the draft read, Jin Poppy, I think don't provide any value there. It's something that um, doesn't give them the edge. It's like picking Poppy against T1, inviting range champs for Korea is just like a terrible read. Then again, in those team fights, in terms of what I know him for, the patience, knowing when to tether to the enemies, when to strike, when to go. There were many moments where Bin was just completely out of place, even though he got solo kills, even though he had pressure, came back into the game after being behind in the swap. Bin didn't execute in the team fights well. So for me, Billy Billy, I think best of three start. I believe that they should be able to do better. I believe that they should should be very capable of doing a lot better. I think taking a couple of days off, like I'm watching them play CQ all the time. They are playing the champions that they didn't play in the previous day. So they are doing a little bit of a catch up. But I do think when Yon is banned, when Yon is out, all of a sudden opens the door to this dimension of Oriana, of Arya and so forth. So it's just a question of where do you want to go? And I think that when those doors close, when Yon is out of the picture and they are prioritizing, let's say, the Vi and they have the right answers, I do think that Bilibili is very close to becoming like a menace again. I think in the best of threes, having some lighter opponents, I think uh, on my end, as a person that predicted Billy Billy to win, I put them to be like, I have them every pick him aspect is just Billy Billy. I s still believe that two best of ones is not enough for me to sell them here because I do think this is a circumstance of uh, just figuring out the meta, picking the right champs because this team yeah. is very, very dangerous. I mean also, they played against, like, two good opponents. Like, LNG has looked good at this tournament so far. Like, T1 has looked good at this tournament. And it's not like they got fucking rolled by these teams or, like, they, like, lost in, like, some really egregious fashion. Like, they were they had a lead coming into the Drake fight. You know, they had the, they had the worst Drake fight of all time. That was one of the things that I talked to Yamato about, like, uh, when he mentioned the, the, the Poppy is, like, Bin just ulted a, a like, you know, it's, it's darkness. Nocturne ults. And then from Knight's perspective, he's like, okay, I'm playing the fight. And then suddenly Bin just ulted a poppy right onto his face. You get insta stun into the wall, into Yone combo, and like the whole fight is just over. So like these moments are not enough. For, and then they had the really bad Baron versus T1 where they look like they had control of the game because Zeus got solo killed by Bin, you know, one time. Then they had another play where the whole fight is predicated on the fact that Bin is stronger than Zeus. So Bin is all inning Zeus, then Faker is TPing to try to save it. Knight TPs as well. They kill them there. You know, these are situations where BLG has control of the game. The only thing that was bad was that they were on Soul Point. So I thought, okay, Soul Point is spawning. BLG is going to reorient themselves towards the Soul. They'll just keep the game slow and they'll win through this Jax. And they went for this Baron play, which I think was a fine Baron play. But the way that they played it with Bin, like being on the wrong side, if he was yeah, yeah. there in front of his his carries, because it was a no, no ulti Ari, um, and a Jin, if he was in front of his carries and he made himself as like a wall to get through, I think that they probably can get that Baron and 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 win that fight. So like these mistakes are still like like some of the finer mistakes versus teams that are good. They still look like themselves in like the early mid game. They're still able to get leads within the game, but you know they're just they're making crucial mistakes. I just don't see this being the case going forward. I mean, also one thing you have to consider about BLG is BLG was not a team that was just completely like stomping everyone 2-0 in the best of threes in LPL. Like, they were 15 and 7, and they would drop the majority of game ones. That used to be the thing about BLG. That was the whole meme about them. It's like, oh, yeah, game one BLG. They just lose to every single per team. And then game two and three, it would just be like, game two, they would win pretty convincingly. And then game three, they just, like, put their dick down. It's like, what the fuck? Like, god damn, how, was, how did this team ever win a game one? That's, like, yeah, that's how it always felt in, in the BLG series. So... I feel like they, they got a little bit unlucky in, in um, the best of ones when it came to just like how they played some situations, like not unlucky in terms of like, like, you know, they couldn't control it, but in terms of how mistakes snowballed, like random mistakes from, from players snowballing the entire game. And they lost to like quality opponents. I mean, I had like, I had LNG low. I had T1 top four um, in this tournament, but I had LNG really low because I didn't, I, when I made my tier list, I thought they were playing with Yigao, and I fucking think Yigao is playing horrible right now. He would actually probably be okay in this meta. Um, I think this meta would be much better for him. But my God, is he fucking like, was he really bad at the 80 carry mid meta? And like, I don't want to see a Yigao Yone. If I have to watch Yigao play Yone. <laughs> like... 
<laughs> oh shit, bro. I don't know if I'm gonna fucking make it. So with your gal, I was like, this team is 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 awful. But you know, with Scout, I think LNG is a respectable team. I mean, they should be a team that's like top eight as as they made it out. So you know, we'll we'll have to we'll, we'll have to see how BLG looks versus versus uh, PSG. But I mean. I mean, they should make it. I mean, I don't think there's any team that's going to end up in the 2-2 two -two that wants to get BLG, assuming that BLG beats PSG. Like, they're the team that everyone is shitting their pants. Like, you know, when when I'm here, like, when I'm rooting for Team Liquid, obviously, in this, these stages are the stages where essentially how it goes is, like, I always root for NA. Then after NA, I root for EU. Then after EU, I root for LPL. And then after LPL, I just hope LCK doesn't win. You know, like, that's pretty much, like, my <laughs> tier. That's my that's my tier list of like my importance. So I'm still at the the point where I'm really rooting for um, the NA teams before you inevitably just get knocked out before Swiss. Um, and the whole time that I'm that I'm I'm looking for for like our the the draws. I'm just please don't draw a BLG team liquid because I feel like that is just actually unwinnable. Because if you look at the the points in the game where T1 and 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 um, LNG are giving themselves the chance where they're in the game enough to actually outplay potentially on a Baron or outplay on a third Drake, whatever, because they're actually doing that, you know, it's you, you're like, okay, like these teams can beat BLG. I don't think TL could get there. I don't think TL yeah. could get to these game States versus, versus a team like BLG. I think they would just lose instantly. So I don't know. I feel like, like BLG, they can shore up a couple things. Um, I mean, their drafts are, are fine for them, I think, but they, I mean, they're, they're a team that I don't think Way's played a Skarner game before, so he's playing his first Skarner game ever versus T1, whereas T1 oh, is playing cool. something, yeah, and, and On is playing Poppy. I think that the real problem was the Poppy. Like, I think Way looked fine on, on Skarner. I think On was useless on Poppy. Like, his Poppy just looked like ass the entire time. Um, So, when I'm looking at BLG, I'm like, they're still fine. Like, they're still fine. When you look at those comps, like, that is a T1 comp. That is a bread and butter T1 comp. You know, they're playing, what, the Vi, Silas. This is something that they played a lot in previous iterations, and that lineup's been together for um, a while. You look at Karia on his his really good supports. When I did my breakdown, this is what I said about Karia. I'm like, he wants to be the guy who's playing the Nico, the Bard, the Poppy support. Like, he wants to have that agency on that weird pick. He doesn't want to be playing Engage versus Engage. So there's definitely ways that BLG can orient themselves to have a more point of strength. Like they ended up playing the weird matchup versus the weird matchup versus Caria. That's not what you want. You want the Rel Leona matchup. You play Rel Leona into Caria, it's like you feel you feel like you're winning that every single time as BLG. So um I'm not worried about them. I think the TL has looked worse. I mean TL has had easier opponents, number one, I would say. Like uh, you know, TL had had you know Weibo LNG, which I mean I guess they both had LNG, but I would say Weibo is an easier opponent than T1, right? Yeah. And they both played a wild card team. I would say probably Matt is better than Payne, even though that hurts me to say. But I think that the way that TL has looked, they've just looked, they've looked worse to me. Like that Payne series really bothered me. I was fine with the way they lost to LNG and Weibo, but I just hated how they were looking worse and worse into weaker and weaker opponents. So if I'm having to do a fraud alert, I'm saying Team Liquid looks more fraudulent compared to BLG. Like I'm still, I'm still feeling like BLG, like if BLG somehow don't make it out of the best of threes, it's is way that? crazier. It's way crazier than like the top esports not making it out, or like when they were second seed, or um, you know, like when FPX didn't make it out. Like this is a team that dominated China. Neither of those teams were champions in China. Like the top esports team wasn't didn't win China. They got they got second place. Um, FPX got got second place in both splits. BLG had, was top two MSI. They've been a clear top two team in the world the entire year, and they yeah. dominated LPL. So it's like even the idea of you know, people always be like, oh, well, that's because OPL sucks. Like, that's always the argument that you go, that you you run up against. It's like, okay, so explain to me then how LNG is now better than BLG. Like, even if you compare BLG to LNG throughout the year, it's like LNG's made it out 4-0 and BLG's in the 1-2. Like, like, how do you even rationalize this? Because BLG has been better than LNG essentially the entire year. Yeah, uh, so a couple, couple points that I wanted to make. Uh, first is the, the path there that you kind of touched on. BLG has played tough teams, LNG and, and T1. LNG has played one tough team, which was BLG, and then a winnable Korea game against E+, and then a TL, who is uh, the other topic here. The other thing is Poppy is in that stats that I, uh, like kind of like that interesting stats that I wanted to bring up. It has been one of the most banned champions. It's been banned uh, 13 times, played six times. Guess what his win rate is? Zero. One game, maybe? Yeah, it is 16%. It is the lowest win rate out of all champions that has been played five times. The lowest yep. win rate. So it's just kind of...
kind of nuts. Uh, and has a win. Sorry. Alistair and Akali are also on five, but that, you know, whatever. Poppy at one in five has a win, but has just been uh, down there. But banned 13 times, way more than any of those other ones. Lucian has been banned nine times, hasn't won a game yet. So uh, I think that that draft point was very interesting, as well as the best of one point. I forgot that until you brought it up. They always, they almost always lost game one and then would come back and just stump so it, it just feels scarier though dom just because they they're out of losses to give you know if they do have yeah. an oopsie against someone it's, it's really it's, it's really scary it's really scary and it's but like what people have to understand is that the whole point of worlds is entertainment it's not competitive integrity like they right. this is the this this tournament has the worst competitive integrity out of every single tournament the entire year when it comes to domestic leagues like msi if you look at MSI, it's like the best teams always get to the end of MSI, right? Right. Like you look at like the last MSI, it's like the teams that are playing well get there because it's double elimination. It's only best of five. The reason why they have the format like it is, is, I mean, they could easily play best of threes instead of best of ones if they wanted to. I mean, they have fucking, they're doing it in the fucking LEC studio. It's not like they're, they're renting out a big fucking arena and it costs millions of dollars to operate this. They could easily just have more days of Swiss. I mean, we've just days off in the middle of Swiss. They could do three best of threes a day, which would be fine. It would probably be on average, like the same as what the eight best of ones days were, but they want there to be this drama. They want it to be like BLG versus T1. And then like the loser of this, right? The loser of this, whoever it is, even if T1 lost to, to BLG, people would be saying the same thing. It'd be the same thing reverse. Like, oh my God, T1, the defending world championships on the brink of elimination. Can they do it? Like, this is the type of storylines that they, they end up wanting. On top of that, I would theorize that the reason mm -hmm. why Swiss is the way it is is because they want a higher chance of a Western team getting out. And if there was just really competitive and like if it was just only best of threes best of fives what the asian teams are good at i think there's a very high chance that we would end up like last year i don't think we're getting a, a western team out you know like we're not getting a western team out at all like energy is just going to lose to you know even dom one who ended up playing kt i believe um at the end i think dom one would probably just end up stomping energy and then we just have eight uh eastern teams with the format the way it's set up because of the draws there even if Every Asian team, this is a stat, even uh, I think I got it last year uh, and the format is is the same. It might be slightly different because there's no, because there's like no region kill in the first round. I don't know if this would make it better or worse, but at least for last year's Swiss, um, if every Asian team beats every Western team they play, there's still a 66% chance that a Western team gets out. Because there would be like a team kill at like two and two or something. A region because, kill at two and yeah, two. because there could because of the draws, there's just a very high chance that like an Asian team beats another Asian team at some point. You yeah. get an Asian team versus Asian team elimination, which would free up the spot for a, a Western team. This is assuming that Western team beats all the, the Plains teams and the Asian teams beat all the Western teams. So I think like the whole point of this is for it to be entertaining and, to, and for it to have the hype. And as a result, you get a lower quality tournament in terms of competitive integrity. But I think that that is like something that they do to make worlds feel special, to make it feel like every round really matters. Because if you go into this and, you know, we're in like, like when you're in MSI, there's some matches that you watch where there's like a best of five on the day. And you're like, I think this team is getting fucked today. Like, I think uh, TL <laughs> versus top esports, I think they're just getting rolled like Genji versus Fnatic. I think it's going to be rough for Fnatic. But if, if it's the best of one Genji Fnatic, then who knows what could happen? You know, like they they add that anxiety um, into it as well. And they put the teams in an uncomfortable format. So it's one of those things where I, I like, you have to just understand what worlds is. And if you want like the, the team, the competitive integrity tournament, you want like the, the, the team that, or the tournament that proves who the best team in the world is. I feel like that's MSI. Like MSI is like, like when, when Genji wins that shit, you're like Genji one BLG two, boom, settled. Like can't argue with it at all. Definite, you know? Like when, when you watched last year, it was like, JDG is the best team in the fucking world. Like at that point, JDG is the best team in the fucking world. Like you can't even say anything about it. You know, you saw, you, you, you saw how they played versus the other teams. Just worlds, you know, there's, there's the breaks in between. There's the change of the meta. They just want to spice it up. They want to just get some hype. And I think that they also want to raise the chances that something crazy happens to make it, to, to make for the storylines. So that's my idea with, with worlds after watching the tournament so many times. All right, Yamato, get in there. Like talk on the... Uh, talk on a little bit of the format there and then hop into TL as a fraudulent squad. 
I I do agree with the notion that this is is very very entertainment driven. I do I, like I am very entertained. <laughs> yep. I, like, I, I am too. a tough person to entertain. I think like in regards to the group stages, right? It's like in the past you always had you always had to beat one Korean or one LPL team to make it out of groups, right? So it was very honest, but it was very repetitive, right? And 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 boring. And now with the draws and every single day it becomes very dramatic. I think it is a good change that we can't have. Uh, the same matchups happen again because in the off chance the G2 beat T1, then you have these teams. So basically, they have these teams in the in that bracket that have to face off against Billy Billy and T1, and those teams can't match each other. So you just know that there's going to be like a big a big pool of blood, you know, at the end of the two two if they manage to end up there. Um, I I think that. Um, you know, it's it's weird because I, I think what BB said is just so right. It's like uh, he, he was like, I'm I'm happy that we drew T1 because if we qualify to best of fives and lose the first one, what does it really matter? It's like it's a talking point for the majority of fans because everything is so results driven. It's like what the number is like. Look, they made top eight. It's like NRG made top eight, but are they were they the eighth best team? Like as Dom said, it's like it's not really. True, you know, they probably they probably weren't even better than G two. Like I always like yeah, memes. It's like yeah. look at fucking look at energy. Look at how shit EU is. Our best team too old. Your best team. It's like that was a on the day type of thing. You know, if I if I was betting the next time they played each other, I would bet on G two. You know, I'd be like, for oh sure, nice, yeah. the odds are a little bit better for G two now because energy won the first series. Like I think the G two was a better team than energy. Yeah, yeah. Um, at it's that like point, the, but it's just energy was better on the day. So I mean, that's just how it, it goes. It was the same with PSG, right? It's like Mad Lions beat PSG, but it was such a goofy way. Like I was saying in our group chat and I was saying publicly too, it's like, I think PSG is a lot better than Mad Lions. And everyone's like, what the fuck? PSG just lost to them. I was like, yeah, they lost because Alvaro like flash pulverized the Leblanc when they're 4K goal behind in a situation where it's, which is like a freak off chance situation that occurs for you to come back in the game. Like it was similar like the Hanwha Life series. Like after two games, it was like very obvious that JNG is playing better than Hanwha Life. Like the way they won that game one, like you can't rely on the light snapping four people's necks, you know, in a situation where Pina gets caught. It's like JNG just looked better in that series, even in the game that they lost. And uh, I think the same thing for G2. On the topic of Team Liquid, I, I, it's, it's like, I don't know, the, the first two games they played, uh, like the best analogy is like they're playing a beautiful piano piece and then someone just slams, you know, slams the piano down, dish, they break their hands and I don't know what happened, you know, so it was like the Nico game. You just see, you know, I hear that music, dum, 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 dum. you know, it's like flying towards the, the, the dunk, you know, the Nico's coming over the angle, you know, he's there, he's, he's, he's securing, the, he's beating the buzzer, you know, he's, he's going to, to do the, the winning shot and then he just misses the wall and then it's like, ah, oh, no, no, what happened? And the same thing with Weibo Gaming, man. It's like the game is looking good. It's like they are they are finding the right angles. They have like a, a good draft to to like win the game. And uh, suddenly we have like that mo moment where, of course, like Cinder tries to flash over the wall to get him. And even even the thing that happened before that, like I don't remember who got caught. Was Zoom that got caught? Uh, got caught. Impact. Impact got caught uh, ahead of that. And it's like they, they just needed to play the situations out a little bit more uh, simple. And what worries me is that seeing those two games and then the pain gaming follow up, it felt like the pain gaming games were filled with tension, you know, they were filled, filled with a sense of tension. It's, it's, it feels like something is, is hanging over them in a way that that spooks me because I don't think the execution is the same in terms of what we have come to expect from them. Uh, I think that this was a team that was very, very elegant in terms of how they took space and how they progressed games when they got leads. I think this was like their... I'm, I have a bird attack outside my window. I don't know if you heard that. Yeah, um, what the fuck hear that? that? I, I was know. like, <laughs> what is happening? It's a ton of birds. <laughs> uh, Team Liquid fans. That way, <laughs> Team, <laughs> this, <laughs> this, this, the, the pain gaming series. Uh, just as I mentioned, it's like it's something feels so so off. There's like mistakes that occur that make the game more difficult to play, uh, and um, for me that is very very worrisome. You know, there's a clear trend here, and I think that they are very lucky that they get to face off against Gum because I do think that Gum is a little bit overrated right now after beating a very weak Mad Lions. Uh, I think that Gum very Gum's very weak, like just insanely. In just like Insane disgustingly weak. weak yeah like <laughs> pathetically weak like it was embarrassing embarrassingly weak i would say yes that. yes 
Thank you, Dom. I will just use you as uh, <laughs> whenever I, I will I'll just try to put you on my <laughs> uh, boom. I'll put you on my uh, soundboard, and then whenever I mention Mad Lion, so I'll just let you add lib <laughs> in that. But I'm just I think trying to I'm, support you as a co-host. You know, I think it's really important that we're on the same page to really drive home the point. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah, that's Yamato what I heard. Yamato, Yamato thinks uh, Mad Lions is absolute shit. That's what I heard. Yep. 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 Yamato Yamato thinks they're absolute it. shit. Team Liquid will bounce off them, and I think that maybe that they can use that as a jumping zone. And I agree with the sentiment. Hope they don't meet Billy Billy because I think that's the case for everybody. And if G2 manage to somehow beat T1, because I think they are the other dog against T1, obviously, uh, <laughs> having T1 and Billy Billy in that 2 2 bracket is completely insane. Yeah, they it's can't play each other. And, and they, they can't, can't play, each, play other. each other, bro. So like, they're, they're like you are fucked. getting. You are getting fucked, bro. Like you are getting <laughs> fucked in that one. Imagine it's just like like FlyQuest like creeps in, like who are our opponents? And just BLGT1 just fucking waiting there for FlyQuest. Nah, it's fucking it's a wrap. It's yeah, a wrap it's pretty, it's pretty tough for TL too, because they can't, assuming that Weibo takes care of business gets fanatic, they can't play Weibo either, since mm -hmm. they already played. So I mean the, look, you've, you've, you've got a just, one in one in three chance of drawing. I mean, I'll just drawing one in it's one tough. in four one and four but i mean i would say that like the the thing is as an na fan all you want is you just want flyquest versus tl in that 2-2 you want tl to beat gam flyquest to lose and then you just want an na team guaranteed getting out rather than you know uh, uh, a situation where we have to play an asian team to get out because it's not looking like and when you think about the asian teams the only asian team i could see team liquid beating right now that would be in the 2-2 or that i think could be in the 2-2 would be dom one right outside of yeah. them if Han Life somehow ends up in the 2-2, two -two, T1, BLG, if Top Esports somehow ends up in the 2-2, two -two, and you can't play Weibo, it, you're just fucked, right? Like, you can't beat any of those teams, I don't think. Like, yeah, maybe I they mean, need a G2. Maybe G2 plays bad on the day. Like, you could see that. I don't think G2's at a level where Team Liquid could never beat them or anything. So, yeah. Just, just for the example here, let's say that the LCK teams win, except D+, plus top wins. So then it's D+, plus FlyQuest, G2, BLG. Those are your four options of who you could play if you're yep. Team Liquid because you can't play Weibo and then that that's it. So you have four options, two of them being, uh, you know, these top LPL squads. It, it just seems a little brutal. Or I guess, yeah, never mind. Uh, either D plus or uh, BLG. It just seems pretty brutal. So, uh, but again... You know, if if they take care of business from the bottom bottom side against uh, Gam, it does give a high probability that some Western team will play another Western team to qualify on in. Otherwise, which is it, the whole like point of, of of the Swiss format. That is literally the point of the Swiss format. Like I think they really, I think Riot really saw the writing on the wall in that 2022 Worlds because if you think about that 2022 Worlds, it's like the only reason Rogue Rogue was the only team that qualified out right oh um, gosh, from yeah. from the West, and it's like. The top esports team like had a catastrophe and they still were looking like they still if they had just beat gam which came down to like a maw of malmortius bug like if that didn't end up happening top esports probably ends up winning from that game state and then they're just they're probably just going to clean up the tiebreaker versus rogue like when you saw how they beat them the second time they played if they play a tiebreaker i mean they're just it's it's probably just going to be eight asian teams in the the quarterfinals also there seems to be a big fucking gap like there hasn't at Worlds a team hasn't won a game outside of the group slash Swiss stage since 2020 G2 since G2 beat Gen G four years ago. That was the last time that a Western team won one game like not, like didn't get three owed when they made it out of Swiss slash groups. So it's like we're getting close to the eight Asian teams. So I think that Riot was like, oh, it's a Swiss format. Look at look at how unique and nice it is. Oh shit, Western teams are getting out every time. How how unfortunate! Like that's crazy. I mean, look at the matchups that could happen, right? BLG could just team could have just team killed Weibo already, right? They already had a, had a chance to, to to region kill Weibo. They're gonna be in the two two. Like it, assuming that Weibo makes it out, you could get BLG Weibo. You could get BLG Dom one. That right there, that would just free up a spot. You know, like like there's so many opportunities for you to 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 just get that spot. Um, team killed, region killed uh, by the LPL and LCK team. So that's the idea i think i i cannot 
again that world's 2022 in madison uh, madison square garden i guess in the hulu, hulu theater, theater which is next to madison square garden that was just so eye-opening how pro lpl the crowd was in america that was just so just it was one of the most disgusting turn of events for north american fans no one got the tickets no one showed up lpl fans have boxes boxes of printouts you know those like little printouts that they hold like their fan teams it wasn't like even organized by the orgs it was just fans had them and they're giving them out as people were going in i was like damn this is true fandom and this made it a home game not that it necessarily mattered you know who'd we send like cloud 900 thieves and who like i was it FlyQuest at the time? I don't I don't remember, but it was it was not great showing by the Western teams there. But it, it was definitely a hometown was, feel for the LPL squads. And oh my god. It was uh oh. it was EG, I believe, right? Wasn't it the EG, EG. without Danny? Yeah. yeah. Oh, my goodness. Goodness. Corey. Yeah. Yep. Yep. The throwback, the throwback. Thanks. LaPointe. All right. Well, Time to move on. Oh, so those are our fraud alerts. What do you scale the fraudulency here for BLG and TL on a scale of one to 10? Again, they're not out, but where they're at now. BLG fraud, one to 10 here, Dom. Give them like a four, like a three, maybe something around there. I I I thought you'd give them a four. If they get knocked out, what would they be? I mean, it would probably be like a nine or a 10 based on expectations, but I feel like it would just, it would just be kind of sad. I feel like for the tournament, because it's like, like BLG should like, I mean, they've just been one of the teams this year. Like when you're looking at what the world championship is, like you want to see like a Gen G BLG series again, like, oh, how much of BLG improved? What happens if it's in a different meta without like what were BLG's better at the lane swaps? Let's see what happens there. Like BLG Han will live. Like these are the, the matchups that you want to see. So it's like, I feel like it kills a lot of hype for the tournament because Sure, there'll still be LPL teams. I mean, you'll get like LNG out, top esports out, whatever, but it's like those aren't the LPL teams you want to see. Those aren't the fun LPL teams. Like, like LNG yeah. is the least fun. They were the least fun LPL team. They were the most Korean LPL team. Like, you want to see some of the fun teams get out, and BLG is like the one fun team that it feels like could actually win. Like, the one team that plays that loose, aggressive style that most people gravitate towards. I mean, if you're a fan of like, you know, D plus or even how G2 plays, like, people like the loose aggression. Like, that is that's i feel like that's always kind of been that's kind of the attraction of t1 for example right like like that is just what people like to watch more than the super stable boring league of legends that like we see from genji yeah uh yamato what do you rate them i I want to i was thinking four three at first but i want to give them a five because of that kindred ban on three and no ban in the four (laughs) five like that that is just so disturbing that is insanely disturbing and so unserious, like it's so fucking unserious. And like, I, I believe that Billy Billy is one of the teams that has like the highest potential at this tournament. And they are currently like for sure, uh, you know, slumping in terms of where I would put them in terms of meta read and so forth, everything we talked about. So I'm going to give them a five. Team Liquid, I, th- I would put them in, 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 in a similar regard, maybe like, like a six, because I, I do appreciate how close they were against LNG and Weibo. These are still like formidable teams, but like the game against the series against pain gaming that is like well it becomes kind of scary to me so i'm I'm gonna give them a little six but uh it can change so fast <laughs> what do you think uh tl here dom yeah i would say like probably uh like they looked really fraudulent versus pain i would say the 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 Weibo lng i mean i could just stomach if that's the level but the pain one really got to me like i just hated the way that they were playing i mean giving soul for for baron again like when you're 5k again. gold up um, so, I mean, they just looked like they were choking, losing Drake to the Ezreal ult. I mean, I know that Pain did the same thing, but it's just, it was just weird to watch like how stiff they looked. Like, where is the team Liquid I know? Like, they they look way different com- compared to, like, if you take away the fact that BLG ended up losing the game, if you watch the game and you're like, how much of these games looked like BLG? I would say that they like, they still looked like BLG. It just looks like BLG when they lose. Like, but they still have the same essence of BLG. Like, the fighting, I mean, you still see, like, the, the leads they generate, you see why they're a good team, even in their losses. The team yeah. Liquid Games versus Pain were like unrecognizable to me. Like that team was unrecognizable um, to me based on how they're they, they're playing. Like in in NA when they played against a team that's at the level of Pain Gaming, and I would say Pain Gaming is probably like a third four seed in NA. Something like a Cloud Nine Hundred Thieves would be probably the level of Pain. Maybe a little bit or worse or better depending on the day. 
Um, but like you saw how they how they beat the shit out of Hundred Thieves when they qualified to Worlds, the way they three owed them, like just disposed of them when they're making bad macro decisions. They just looked way ahead on the map. They're fast paced, like whatever. It just feels like Team Liquid didn't have that like first pain. It just felt like they were a comparable mechanical team, maybe even slightly worse, but they're just winning because pain just has less information to deal with. Like pain just doesn't have a lot of the information on the game. They, they don't know how to play side lanes the way that the, the TL team does. So TL just get like, okay, they're up like 2k gold coming out of the early game. Suddenly it's just 5k gold because pain doesn't know how to play the side waves with, with the comp that they're playing. Um, and that's why TL ends up winning th that series. So for me, I think, TL has looked more like a six or seven. Like I, I, I should, I should look at TL versus Gam and be like, "There's no shot for Gam." Like that's how it should be. It's like, "Oh, Gam is getting fucking cleaned up." Like the macro of TL is just too good. Um, you know, the the drafting of Gam is just an issue. Like if you ban Yone, you don't give them a good Wukong angle. You know, don't give them, uh, you know, Nocturne Aurora. You first pick it on blue side, whatever. Like if you look at how the game should be, it should be unwinnable for Gam. But I don't feel like that because I just feel like Team Liquid could just completely choke it. And I never had a worry about them choking domestically yeah even 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 after the finals when they lost it was like okay that was a good series by FlyQuest. they made a you know a call and they lost to minions you know they miscalculated that felt like a miscalculation yeah, and like their meta read their, their meta read wasn't the best so i feel like that was something where if they adapted a few things and ran it back they probably end up winning the lcs like i still think they're the best lcs team like coming into this i didn't have hope for FlyQuest. FlyQuest has just got a really nice draw bro like like was got a, a super good draw on that part of that's because they started in the one Oh, but all, even starting in the one Oh, it doesn't really matter. Right. Cause there's, there's a bunch of hellish one, one teams you could have got, or like, um, yeah, there's a bunch of hellish one, one teams you could have got. Like the fact they got PSG is pretty lucky. I mean, it requires PSG losing to mad, but I mean, think about what the one, one was bro. The one, one had BLG. It had T one, like all these matches, I think are just auto losses for FlyQuest. Yeah. I mean, G2, they had Hanwha life and then Weibo and you know, got the win over Weibo. So, mm -hmm. uh, G2, uh, doing work here. Yeah. The pain gaming one, they got bailed out by the Kaisen game. Number one. That was, yeah, that was stressful. I think hear me out on this for the BLG and the fraud alert. It just kind of feels like, what if it's like a seven, if they get knocked out? And I think what if you just blame it as like format they're slow starters, they come back and they turn it on, but now they're out of games to give to do that in a best of five you expect them to be able to turn it around especially if their meta reads a little slow but you know if they end up losing one here let's say they pull like a tough opponent in the 2-2 i mean who could they pull like they should be massive favorites versus anyone they pull assuming that Honda life beats right? FlyQuest. i mean yeah if they if, like if blg loses to d plus that's like disgusting loss that's much worse than losing to t1 or losing to lng like losing to d plus is a D plus just shouldn't even have the two. I mean, that should be the equivalent of like when North America plays a, a playing team. It should be the equivalent of like TL versus Pain, where it should be unwinnable for D plus because D plus just doesn't have the plays in the playbook to go toe to toe with BLG. They don't have the plays that T one has. They 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 don't understand the same things about the game. And we've seen how D plus has looked. They've looked shaky. So I feel like just because the expectations are so high, it would have to be like a fucking t nine or a ten, just because Fair. we've never had a team as strong from the LPL do this poorly. Like, this is like going back to fucking 2018. I mean, 2018 RNG, they still made it out of groups and they, they lost to G2, but this is going back to like 2016, 2015 LPL teams. And now the difference is so much bigger, it feels like, between LPL, LCK, and the rest of the world. Like, LPL and LCK teams just look significant. Like, maybe there's one NA, NA or EU team. You know, the, the, yeah. you're like G2 is, is a team that looks like they can compete. For years, none of the teams look like they could really compete. You know, like in a best of five, I would have taken pretty much any Asian team over any um, Western team a lot of the time. So it's one of those situations where the expectations are so high that this would be like the biggest letdown in the, the history of, of LPL, in my opinion. All right. Well, we'll see if that happens as we uh, have our fraud alert here again. What do you guys think at home? What is the rating? One to ten for BLG and Team Liquid as frauds here in the Swiss stage halfway through. Make sure you comment before they play. Let us know in the comments below while you're there. Make sure to like and subscribe here for all your last Free Nation esports needs. And, of course, we've got our last Free Nation culture channel doing the uh, the film reviews, uh, Nerd Legion, sports going on as well. So make sure to head on over there and give it a like and a follow with some of your favorite personalities, not only in esports, but now crossing all over content. Okay, next up, it's a reminder 
of one of our friends that powers us here over on Power Spike. And it's our friends over at Manscaped. Yes, we've talked about Manscaped before, but did you know they are on the cutting edge? Let's see what I did there of innovation with their newest product, the Chairman Pro Electric Foil Shaver. It's the game-changing tool that brings a luxury professional shave right to your home, whether you're after that daily silky smooth finish or prefer to maintain a rugged five o'clock shadow. The Chairman Pro Electric Foil Shaver is your go-to precision and style for every single time. So again, thanks to our friends over there at uh, Manscaped. I took a look at the video of it because I don't have it here. I have the Weed Whacker, but I don't have it here. Uh, it has two different uh, skin safe blades that are magnetic. You can pop in and out based on what you want. The four foil, or the four blade foil for that close to smooth shave when you're looking to go completely clean. And if that's not your style, that's okay. You've got the stubble trimmer to keep your stubble looking sharp and polished. So make sure to check that one out over at Manscaped. You can head on over to manscaped.com and then use the code powerspike that's manscape.com and use the code powerspike to get 20% off plus free shipping at manscape.com again that code is powerspike and use the code use the code powerspike at manscape.com to get 20% off and free shipping again this is the leader that has worked for all of your Mm, I'd say sensitive areas for shaving. Why wouldn't you trust it for all the parts that you could see visibly all the time and how you shape your face? Again, the new product is the Chairman Pro with their skin safe blade heads, the four blade foil and the stubble trimmer. Really easy to pop in, pop out, as well as great flex adjust technology to move around all different sides of your neck. A lot of time you buy a razor and you know, it's just one shape. No, this one goes around your neck and a lot of people have different head shapes, different neck shapes, don't worry. Uh, Manscaped has you covered with the newest product. Again, one more time. Uh, it is our friends over at Manscaped. Use the code POWERSPIKE for 20% off plus free shipping. Thank you, Manscaped, for supporting Powerspike. All right. Next on up, two more, two more segments. Oh, one more segment now. Let's go ahead and knock this one out real quick. Oh, two more segments. We got to do Nostradamus. Got to do it, Dom. This one could be short. It's time for our future predictor here. All right. Nostradamus. Who's winning worlds? Let's get to it. All right, Dom. From what you've seen from Swiss, tell the future here and let us know who is the brightest star. Who will be the one holding up the world's championship trophy presented by Mercedes-Benz and all the different nope. sponsors that Riot puts on? <laughs> all right, so... I have to consider that Worlds never ends up making sense, right? So the easy prediction is just Gen G, right? Like Gen G will just win Worlds because they're the best team right now, right? Okay. They're looking like the best team. But you know who's actually going to win Worlds? It's fucking LNG because they're just vibing no right now. Weiwei is, Weiwei is a Worlds player. Think about Weiwei in, in Worlds last year. Think about Weiwei like throughout like Swiss, uh, Swiss stage last year. This guy is just, he randomly turns it on. He becomes a different player at Worlds. Zika's feeling himself, bro. He's speaking giga Mandarin on the Renekton. Like we're seeing like <laughs> insane amounts, like full dictionary type shit. He spoke so much to, to, to Kingen. Kingen didn't understand a word of it, bro. Like that Olaf versus Renekton 1v1, it was clean. So they're going to win. For no reason. They're just going to vibe. They're a cool team. Gull is going to play Kaisa. They're just going to vibe and they're going to somehow win. People feel like, what the fuck? How could they win? They're just like the worst team from China. Yeah, that's why they'll, they'll win. The, the worst team from LCK won in 2022, right? So this is going to be the tournament. Scout's actually playing differently. Like even when he was playing well, I would say domestically, there's a different amount of like poise he has right now that's looking looking nice to see. Like I really, I respected the Galio game and the Yone game. He just looks like he's, He's peaking right now at the right time. So LNG will win for no reason. There'll be no, there'll be no reason as to why they should win. There's no analysis into it. It'll just be based off pure vibes. That's how it goes. They have looked the best team. They did go undefeated uh, in the Swiss stage. Scout getting his second world championship all on the line here. What do you make of this uh, future-telling prediction here, Yamato? 
Honestly, going what I've learned this year from doing the sackdown is vibes is everything. So, so yep. I'm, I'm bought into the Nostradamus, Nostradamus prediction here that, that LNG is going to make it. I, I mean, just look I, at Scout's hair, man. Like, that's just, that is what world champions are vibes. made of. Like, look at, look at his hair, man. Like, you can tell that he's on vibes. some different shit, bro. He's on some different type of timing right now. So I like it. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm rocking with Scout and LNG, bro. They're going to fucking bring it home for no reason at all. I'm bought in. I still got Billy Billy, even though I have a Genji shirt on. I still Billy Billy thing's gonna bounce back, but I don't wanna ruin the segment. So we're vibing with the with the scout hair. I'm I'm bought in. I saw I saw Gala smile more than ever before on the Don Jack interview. Like yep. there's something different going on over there. So no, I mean, bro, maybe it's the look, Berlin food that's just like fucking loving it, man. Schnitzel and dinner. Yeah, they, there was uh, so we we had a discussion with with Spawn about like how like harmony is important with the team, and they and you need to be able to um win for like your brother next to you and it's like gala just fucking bailed scout out of fucking prison like this motherfucker came through <laughs> it looks like he was he was electrocuted and everything like and and he just bailed him out of fucking prison 700k for his boy tell me that's not vibes like you know you know that chovy is gonna like sit there and he's gonna be looking to like looking to to his right and being like canyon you, would you pay 700k for me like are you down to pay 700k for me i don't know bro i don't know if you have it in you so that's gonna be what drives strife between the other teams and you know that's gonna be the vibes that carry lng all right uh i like that i like that a lot again uh lng running back four out of the five members from the same roster that was there last year uh obviously tarzan has moved on uh we went in so there you have it. The future's been told. You don't have to watch the rest of it. Just watch the next episode of Power Spike and you already know what's going to happen. Dom has foretold the future. LNG taking the victory. Mm -hmm. Yes, there are other favorites. Well, they like don't PLG. play before the next Power Spike, but you know, like it, it is what it is. Oh, That's we'll right. see. Yeah, yeah. You, you don't have to watch these non-Worlds winning teams, basically. It's a cliffhanger. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you had BLG. I had Gen G. I think Gen G getting it done just seems right. But I... You know what? The the vibes team. You know, vibes team. All right. Boom. Nostradamus done and dusted. Do you agree with Dom? Let us know in the comments below. All right. Now, before we get to our last segment of the day, yes, that's right. It is the Galaxy Brain Club. Time for one more reminder of our friends who has helped us along the way. One of the new sponsors. I don't know how this always happens, Yamato. We don't mm. normally schedule like who's on which show, but every time Yamato's on. It's time to bring up the Grundle Defender. Mm. That's right. It's our friends over at Mando with all their favorite products. All of my favorite products right here. Boom. This is the Invisible Cream Deodorant Pro Sport for pits, packages, and feet. Bam. It has been great for me. Again, riding the subway, using that all across, brought it over. Anytime that I'm traveling, I have Mando products with me. It has been awesome to have and using it because it's been uh, a whole body deodorant. Any portion, any of the crevices, any of the cracks, it is great. And it controls odor for 72 hours. It has been clinic clinically proven to do that as well. And we've got four different cologne quality scents or unscented if you want to get stealthy but not stinky. Again, thanks to our friends over at Mando. They have scents like Bourbon Leather, Clover Woods, Mount Fuji, Pro Sport, and of course, unscented with their deodorant stick, their deodorant cream tube, body wash, cleansing bar, and deodorant wipes for those of you that sometimes won't get the shower in without need, not needing the shower. I know, I know how gamers get sometimes. I was like that at one point. Now I do like the shower, which is why I do have the body wash in the shower for me. But if you got to be on the go and need a quick cleanup before you have an interview, before you go on a date, before you meet the parents, all that stuff, deodorant wipes have you covered. Again, now our offer for you friends at home to help support Power Spike is getting $5 off. That's right. $5 off. Uh, the starter pack with our exclusive code SPIKE. 
That's spike is our code that we want you to use over at shopmando.com. S H O P M A N D O dot com. Five dollars off a starter pack that equates to forty percent off uh, off of the starter pack by using the code spike at shopmando.com. The starter pack is perfect for new customers, comes with a solid stick deodorant, cream tube deodorant, and two free products of your choice. Again, they've all been great. Thanks to our friends over at Mando. Use the code SPIKE at shopmando.com to get 5% off the starter pack there with them and get you smelling cleaner and better. Boom. Thanks to our friends over at Mando. All right, let's close it on out. Time for the big one, Galaxy Brain Club. What are our dream quarterfinals teams and matchups given the current setup that we have? Obviously, a couple teams already out. LNG and Gen G already in, and we have some of these matches set that are going to knock out some of the teams, but it seems pretty clear who we'd like and who not. Who is our dream matchups? It's our Galaxy Brain Club. Okie dokie, guys. Our qualifying rounds are first. D-plus versus Top Esports, Hanwha Life Esports versus FlyQuest, G2 versus T1, and then our knockout rounds with BLG versus PSG, Weibo versus Fnatic, and TL versus what was formerly known as Gigabyte Marines, now Gammy Sports. Let's go through it. Who do you want to see through in our round four matches? Uh, I guess I can go. Uh, on my end, it's like the most important thing for me, right, is that D plus don't make it. I don't know why, but I have this feeling that they don't deserve it because of the run-up they've had. I, in my mind, they lose to LNG, then they lose to Top Esports, and then they're gonna get Billy Billy 2, they're gonna get slapped around, get the whole LPL process, they're gonna lose all the matches after being 2-0 up, and this is gonna be sent into, you know, the dark realm. That would make me very happy. Because I didn't think they would qualify to the World Championship in the first place. Like, I was watching that, that, that shit with Dom. We were sitting in the couch. We're like, there's no way D-plus make it. You know, it's like, T1's going to beat them easy peasy. You know, and then we have uh, KT is going to smoke them out. And somehow they made it. They beat T1 in that moment because T1 was very weak. So for me, I just want D-plus to not make it. I think T1's probably going to win that round too. And then How a Life as well. I think those are just the favorites to take it. Uh, but if you want me to expand on what I want in the quarterfinals, I just want all the Eastern teams and then G2. And then I just want to see a world where How Alive, G and Billy Billy are just as far away as, from, as possible from each other. Give us the <laughs> cross-regional matchups. Don't let like, like the, the, the Korean teams and the LPL teams kill each other in the first round. That would be so sad. That would be so boring. I wouldn't want that. Give us a nice proper build up with a massive crescendo at the end where we have like an LPL team against an LCK team in the final and not a Weibo that somehow got there. It's just a team that, you know, represents a path that was filled with hardship, which I think if these eight teams qualify would be the case. Oh, I already know what we're getting in quarterfinals. We're getting Gen G BLG. That's just going to be our fucking quarterfinal match. It's like, what the fuck is this? Could these teams be the best two teams in the world? And they're just going to meet in quarterfinals and no one will be happy based off that. So I just know that it's going to be like LNG on one side. They're going to get some scrub team. They're going to get the fraudulent like fucking TL or FlyQuest because TL will just make it through by playing FlyQuest, right? Like, so LNG will get that. And then on the same side of the bracket, they're, they're just going to 3-0. Then on the same side of the bracket, you're going to have like, you're going to have fucking like yeah, you're going to have T1 play like Hanwha in there as well. And then on the other side is going to be Gen G BLG with like, you know, I don't know, G2 getting a, uh, G2 and top. a yeah, G2 top. And they end up like get, losing a tough series where it feels super winnable. We just know that some bullshit is going to end up uh, happening. So I can't I can't wait for um, the quarterfinals to be bad. Look, the thing I is, swear, last the optimist year, and the pessimist. <laughs> it's just both <laughs> yeah. sides of the coin. <laughs> well, look, I, I, if I have noticed something last year, like people would look at the draw and like that was the perfect draw. Like that, like the quarterfinals draw was literally as perfect as you could have got because you got LPL. You had no region kill, right? You had just LPL playing against LCK, and then the L, the LPL. So you had f three LPL LCK, and then one LPL versus the NA team that got out. So it was per. It's like you had BLG Gen G. Well, you had that last year. That was when BLG ended up winning. 
And you had Weibo, NRG. Weibo ended up winning. You had JDG, KT, which was really hard for, for KT. JDG ended up winning that. And then T1, LNG, and that's what started their run. Like, I, that was the perfect draw. We're not getting the perfect draw this time. We're getting some bullshit this time. I'm telling you, we're going to get some fucked up, you know, world's quarterfinals draw. So I, I'm just going to say I, I saw it coming the, the whole way. Like, we're just prepare to be disappointed, guys. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, well, hopefully they put the names in the balls this time when they do the draw. Like, did you guys see that? Like, that was, that was crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. They're shooting that blanks. Like, it's, uh, that I just, was crazy. It just seemed so sus because they're like, they're like, hold on, we didn't put the names in the balls, and then they're like, and now we have the balls. And T one has drawn Pain Gaming. It's like, <laughs> okay. I mean, I guess like, I guess we just didn't put that. Like, I just don't see how you fucked that up. But I mean, I guess I don't know. But it was entertaining. No Maybe that was the goal again. To make yep. it even more dramatic. Just imagine a world where they draw that empty ball earlier, like in the first. Like, let's say they draw it fifth. Do they just start yeah. over? What happens then? <laughs> that's not... Yeah. That's not that's such no, a fuck no, up I think, not accounted for in the uh, well, rule book. I think, I Maybe think if, if it only, was written in America, but... I think that there was only one empty ball there. So because there was yes. only one empty ball, the first draws would have been valid, and they would have just, like, filled in that ball with, you know, the team that was supposed LNG, to be in there. Yeah. Yeah, and then they would have just redrawn it. So I think that would have been valid. I think the problem was in the second phase, there must have been multiple empty balls when they did everything. They're like, wait, what the fuck? Like, there's three balls missing. <laughs> like, yeah, I think really somebody great. like rolling up the team names or just snorting, you know, Coke, you know, <laughs> <laughs> like the producer fuck? backstage, you know, and he's going, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I, 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 I thought it was just so weird because. It, it ended up working out that first draw, the one O pot or whatever it was, because it was the last ball picked. I think if it was like the fourth or fifth one, they would have been like, wait, there's a missing ball. And then they would have probably frantically opened the other ones and been like, oh shit, the other ones were there. Uh, and then we would just do a redraw or something like that. But because it was the very last one picked, I think it ended up being okay. I, I just wanted to bring that one up. It just, I, I couldn't. I couldn't believe that, man. That's kind of crazy. And they, they left the ref hanging. They left lore hanging. Like, again, Shox is on the couch trying to, like, make sense of it. And also you not say anything the ref that was, was an official. The, the yeah. ref was like, it, like, she felt like, she's like, she's like, fuckers didn't draw me the fucking ball. Fuck them. Yeah. Like, she, like, she had this look <laughs> on her face. It's like, she fucking hated that shit. I would hate that shit, too. It's like, you set me up to look like a fucking clown. Like, come I on. Know. The LCK referee, he became a freaking celebrity. Now she looks like it's her fault. It's not her fault. That's not yeah. her fault. That was crazy, dude. So, uh, again, a little, a little weird. I think for me, if we look at the draw and, you know, it would be great if all the LCK teams went on through. I, I would like that. But top versus uh, top versus DK, or I mean, TS versus DK doesn't look so great. So I think that's the one there. But yeah, I think a region kill to get a, a North American team on in would be great. You know, TL versus FlyQuest, that's good. And then G2 getting in. One of those two and G2 getting in. And I think it's Weibo that gets bumped on out. And yeah, I guess D+. Plus. I guess Weibo and D+, plus are the two teams that would get knocked out. So you get BLG. Yeah, okay, we'll go TL. Sorry for that. Oh. I don't know. I don't know. Like, who do I want to go? It's like to to go. You know, get body three zero. FlyQuest or TL? Who would who would you rather have go, Dom? TL because they actually have a chance to do something. Where FlyQuest is just going to be the FlyQuest is like the normal North American good team. That's how they look to me. They look like the team that just has like they're good enough to beat the bad teams, but they play NA style very slow. You know, like. They don't really get gold leads. They just try to like out macro you. They remind me of like the cloud nine teams that used to be good or the old TSM teams or TL. Like they have that very slow, like methodical style, which when they play against better teams, they can just never pull it off. So they, they have a cap. I feel like TL actually has enough grit to like potentially upset in like a one out of thousand scenario where I feel like FlyQuest could like never upset, but maybe I'll be wrong. Who knows? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I just look, what if, what if G2 wins? What if G2 beats T1? And then T1 has to play, I don't know, whoever. T1 has to play BLG. T1 has no, to they play. Can't. No, they, they can't. can't play. They can't play they BLG. Played already. Uh, so everybody okay. else is just fucked. <laughs> they have yeah. It would be T1 Weibo or T1 TL. Mm. Yeah. Or BLG Weibo. Yeah. Yeah. 
Oh, that's right. It could be BLG Weibo, and that opens up a slot as well for another mm -hmm. team to make it on in. Yeah, Very I mean, we'll probably just get a we'll probably just get a Western team out. Like that's that's the whole goal. We'll get a Western team out. We'll have three Western teams in the two two, and one of them will just draw each other. I do think Beautiful. that this the solution that we proposed last week, Dom, where we we put one one twos of LPL and LCK as pot one, and then ones from. EU, NA, and then threes from LPL, LCK as pot two. Like that, that, that I think evens it out a little bit more. And that's probably, if we're going to use Swiss, that seems to be the way to go. And I, I hope that's what they go for. Um, Yeah, for quarterfinals matches, I don't know. Do, do we get region kill? Is there a region kill we'd want to see early on? Do we want to see Hanwha Genji again early on? I feel like I would like to see that early. Yeah, I'd like to see that early because I feel like T1s is like a like a semifinal or finals boss. Let's get Hanwha and Genji early on and then bring in uh, a BLG or an LNG later on in the tournament. That's what I would like. Yeah, 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 yeah. Region, region kills early, so you get the best teams later on. Uh, okay. Well, boom. Those are some of our dream matchups. What are your dream matchups here for the 2-2 two -two and for the quarterfinals? Let us know in the comments below uh, here for our elongated episode of Power Spike. Almost two hours of content for you with just one Swiss, half of the Swiss stage done. We've got one more, uh, I guess, weekend of action starting off tomorrow night. It'll be Thursday Thursday my time, Thursday for you guys as well, all the way through the weekend, and then we'll get another episode of Power Spike for you to set you up for the quarterfinals sometime next week, probably, let's say like 16th, 16th, 17th, something like that. So again, for all of you that have been supporting us throughout the year, thank you so much. Our sponsors have been very happy and re-upped and continue to power Power Spike to get the content out to you. So make sure that you have liked and subscribed to all of our channels across culture, Elephant Sports, and here at LFN. And uh, make sure to watch the co-stream with Dom because holy shit, that shit is so funny. It is uh, very stressful watching North American games, but... With, with Dom, but Dom, you literally said everything I was thinking while we're playing it. During that FlyQuest game, when they were losing to PSG, I, I literally, I was with you. Every single thing, we're like, these are the best players, this is what we're doing, this is what North American talent could be. Just kidding. I believe the whole time, great job. All right, North America. The, it was the, it was so, it was, oh, thank God Whippo fucking carried that game, bro, because it was looking so North American. I mean, like inspired made the rare mistake on mid lane like he gets caught so Bipple gets uh, gets dove then we get caught mid and then we all die in the bot situation as well it was like please man like just get it to fucking gather like we don't even need to be that good our comp that game i thought our comp was so much better than their comp i'm like ivern cat how can they ever kill this fucking casio they're playing vi ari into fucking casio ivern it's like as long as we just play semi-human we've got the ivern leona we got the fucking meat in front of us like just play together and you win and they still I mean yeah they still almost fucking lost it so gave me not much hope for the Honda Life series but we'll see we'll see what happens again you can also check out Yamato's co stream as well both these guys very very entertaining make sure to watch along and check out all their content that they've been putting out also all the leaks that are coming from roster mania we'll cover that one as well thank you so much for watching and we'll see you guys at the conclusion of the Swiss stage